Thank you for tuning in to TTV. I'm your host, Toya. And today is Wisdom Wednesday. And we are going to continue our journey with the Dow to Chain. Okay? Woo! <laughs> Sorry, just being a little silly. Um, so if you haven't watched one of these videos before, the Dow to Chain is a book of 81 verses. Um, I believe it's 81 verses of old wise tales or old wise proverbs, however you want to put it. Um, this was written back like before the 2500 BC, like back around that time. Um, maybe it's called BCE. I don't know. They changed. It used to be BC and AD and then it was BCE and then BE some, whatever the macronyms are before the Christian era, I believe is what it's called. But anyway, that's how long ago these, these, um, these proverbs were written. And what's funny to me is how they still apply even today. All these years later, they still apply almost 5,000 years later they still apply. So that's what I do on Wednesdays is I go through this and we take it verse by verse. And this week we are on verse 17, which is leaders. So let's get into it. Um, there are four types of leaders. The best leader is indistinguishable from the will of those who selected her. The next best leader enjoys the love and praise of the people. The poor leader rules the through coercion and fear and the worst leader is a tyrant despised by the multitudes who are the victims of his power. What a world of difference among these leaders. In the last two types, what is done is without sincerity or trust or without sincerity and trust, only coercion. In the second type, there is a harmony between the leader and the people. And in the first type, whatever is done happens so naturally that no one presumes to take the credit. I like this because I, I, I would agree. I would agree. So we're going to go through and break it down, okay? So it says there are four types of leaders. The best leader is indistinguishable from the will of those who selected her. So to me, that means it's one of those who are amongst the people. So one of the people. They know what the struggles are. They know what the strikes are. And instead of leading, those are the ones who will sit back and ask, you know, okay, I need some volunteers who wants to do this. Hey, you know, you over there, can you do this? You think that's, is that okay for you? You know, they kind of work with the people instead of against them. And it's more of a delegation. I'm, I'm just going to delegate work, but I'm not doing it in a manner to where I'm superior to you. I'm just doing it because the, I'm the one who y'all selected to delegate. That's it. And those, I think, tend to be those people who didn't actually want to be leaders. They didn't want to be put in that role, but they got pushed into that role. <laughs> so because they became in that role and they got pushed in that role, they just, they do it. They do what they need to do. And they take it very serious and they take it to heart and they really care about the people that they are leading. So that's what I feel the first one is. I mean, it says the next best leader enjoys love and praise of the people. So they want to do what is good for the people. They want the people to be happy. They want the people to be satisfied. They want the people to, you know, be okay with the situation. Like, yeah, I'm leading you, but I, I want you to be okay with it. So tell me that I'm doing a good job. Tell me this is what you want. Tell me that, you know, you, you feel I'm a good leader. So that one, I feel, can be easily manipulated by the people. So I don't know if I would necessarily call that one of the best leaders but because of the fact that they can be manipulated by the people because they're looking for that praise, they're looking for that love from the people. So, you know, when you're doing that, you're trying to please everybody and you can't please everybody. And that's one of the downsides to being a leader is you're not going to make everybody happy. But if you can do what you feel is best overall for the people as a whole, then that's what you have to go with. And, and with that kind of leader, if they're looking for the love and the praise of the people, then... To me, they're easily manipulated. So I don't know if I would agree with that. Um, now it says the poor leader rules through coercion and fear. I know I can't say that word. So just we just go keep moving. <laughs> and I would say that is true. You know, if I'm going to rule you through fear and make you feel like you don't have a choice about something, then yeah, you're that's not a good leader. And, and the people are going to end up revolting if they're not um, if they don't revolt, then they're going to be very difficult for you to lead and you're going to always run into problems and always be bumping heads. Um, and the worst leader is a tyrant, despite the multitudes who are the victims of his power. Well, a tyrant, do what I say or I'm going to have you oust. That's it. So in a job situation, that's that one where every time you don't do something that they like, they write you up, threatening to fire you. So that's more along the lines of a tyrant. 
And so for a tyrant, you're not going to get threatened to get fired. You might get threatened to be killed or imprisoned for life, something like that. And so they use that extreme fear to keep people in line. But even that, I think, only goes so far before the people eventually just rise up because they don't care. Like everything is a, a, a threat for my life. You know what? I'm tired. I'm not doing this, <laughs> you know. So it says, what a world of difference among the leaders, which is true. In the last two types, what is done is without sincerity or trust or only coercion. So, yes, there's no sincerity. There's no love. There's no care. There's no nothing. It's just do what I say, you know, and that me is still in that fear in you. That's all there is. There's nothing else. Um, in the second type, there's harmony between the leader and the people. So, yes, there is harmony between the leader and the people. But again, you could be manipulated. And in the first type, whatever is done happens so naturally that no one presumes to take the credit. And that's the one where you are more of a delegator than you are a leader. That's it. Because you're still doing stuff just like everybody else. That kind of leader, which is the first one we talked about, is the one who would be in the trenches with you. OK, that one that's not just going to be sitting in the office telling everybody what to do, but the one out there helping you, too. For example, let's say you work in a job and you short staff. You know, this, the first kind of leader, the best kind of leader is going to be the one telling everybody, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do. You do this, you do this, you do this, I'm going to do this, and we're going to make this happen tonight. Let's go. You know, so it's not, it's almost like you don't feel that they're a leader, even though their title would presume that and how they take over, take charge. That's how you know they're the leader. But outside of that, they just like one of you. And I do think that is the best kind of leader because the fact that they do know how to delegate, they do know how to take charge, but they're also in there within the trenches with you because don't nobody want to be led by somebody who's not doing what, doing what you do. You know, how you going to tell me what to do and you don't even do? You don't know my job. So how you going to tell me how to do my job? You know, that kind of thing. And I, so I, that's why I think the best one is the one who's in the trenches with you, which would be the first one we talked about. So that was my opinion of it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So like, subscribe, share, because if you got something out of the chances are somebody else will as well. And again, that was a doubt of change. Verse 17 for leaders. So I love you guys and I'll talk to you tomorrow.